I'll be reacting to Woodpecker Detectives Office episode 10. And I'll be starting my reaction to this in one, zero, go. All right, I'm pumped up for this. Whoa! I'm actually. Actually, I shouldn't say I'm shocked because, yeah. His balance to Maki was relatively so unstrong. Oh! <laughs> oh my! I mean, sometimes you need a forceful approach against some people, so. He's <laughs> got a point. Someone needs to set our man straight there. Mm hmm. I actually like that though, we get consequence because Kaya was the one who told Tamaki about. Oh no, no, no. I mean. I mean, yes, y'all could argue, I already knew about. We all know about his condition where Kaya was coughing blood, but knowing about his death and then seeing it just slowly, slowly occur before our very eyes is. It's different, you know? Even though we all know his death is an inevitability, it doesn't make it any less sadder to see. And I actually like that. You actually are finally getting to see emotional consequences that some of the early episodes didn't have. For example, it was actually really satisfying to see Kyle actually cry regarding the Tamaki topic because all things considered Ishikawa would have never learned about Tamaki if it wasn't for Kyle so I like that shows you that even someone like Kyle can really admit that they kind of that they fuck up and at the same time it makes the relationships in the series feel a bit more dynamic so I'd say so far it's got a pretty dang good start I gotta say Although, I just wonder how it's going to lead in from there, though, because I'm assuming they're going to potentially start building towards some tragedy. I mean, because I'm being realistic. They're just... Feel like, it just feels like they're going to throw some field grenades at us pretty soon. I mean... What the? F really? Son of a bitch. But hey, sometimes people love and love quicker than others. Uh, they should not be so sure about that. <laughs> Yo, he looks like he's on death's door. At least he's admitting some of the negative traits he has, but in the way that's kind of scary. What, he's gonna finally go up with paying back all of his debts? Now that he feels like his biological clock is ticking? I don't think they'd mind. I mean, especially in the state he's in. You know, even if I were in that state, I'd be cool with just taking only a tenth of the tenth of levels out. <laughs> what else? I'm just trying to guilt trip them all in order to reduce the amount of depth he has to pay. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I know I shouldn't be laughing, but that scene was kind of hilarious. Hmm. Oh. But would he really want to? 
But would he really want to actually commit to that, though? Then he's literally doing what he did. Hmm. Okay, then what's his angle there, then? Oh, so he feels like if he writes about his friends at Samaki, it could change things. Is that... Okay. Actually, I like that growth. Because previous episode talked about how you should always try to strive to find a purpose, and here now, Ishikawa is... He's literally taking the words that Tamaki's told him, and he's living them to heart while trying to live life with a purpose. So I actually like that. We're getting substantial character development from the events of the previous episode. I really love this. I kind of wish this was something they did earlier in the series. When Kyosuke was put in jail falsely, I was hoping he'd get some emotional anger against Ishikawa, but... Yeah. At least now that the series isn't falling into the similar trends they did at the start of the series. So I actually really dig that. Maybe that's actually the best way of living, because you never know when life could come to an end. So I could see why you would look at it from that way. Mm. And especially now, he's going to have no choice but to live his life to the fullest with how much time he has left on the earth. And it's just sad though, just seeing the contrast between how he was at the start of the series, full of life, and now we can see some of his bones and the saggy eyes. It's just really sad to see the contrast. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cute. There. Hmm. Showing us the dynamicness of life in a situation with a lot of dimness so far. It's actually a nice contrast. And it keeps the episode from feeling to one note in like a dire like vibe. So, so far I'm really loving the approaches and emotion that this episode's taking. Hmm. Good, good. <laughs> He's got a point there. If you're, Cause if you're gonna be distracted by hunger, you're not gonna ride as well with Dr. Shows. Hopefully anything too tough though. Hmm. Ah! <clears throat> Good, at least he has a right to ask. Oh. Right. That doesn't seem like a pittery. Oh, that's actually really, really sweet there. And I'm glad our... I mean, I'm glad he's not holding back one bit. And considering Chicago doesn't have much time left, might as well go on to what he wants to do for a bit. It's for the best. <laughs> I have a feeling, though, that novel that Chicago's gonna write, I have a feeling that novel's gonna sell a lot of... a lot of copies. And it's, he doesn't be able to pay back all of his debts. That's what I think is going to happen. I could be wrong, though. Hmm. Oh! I actually love seeing that assertiveness from him. Hell yeah! Hell yeah. No, oh, no, no. Honestly, don't. Now, all those scenes where you just coughing off foot are just hard to watch. Okay, I mean, I could see why they would have that perspective, don't you? He should put his foot down a little bit more when it comes to Chicago. Sometimes I. 
I um, can agree with that dude's perspective on that. At least to a certain extent, I can. Hmm. Just wondering where this is gonna lead, though. You know? Hmm. Looking like a big ass novel, though, with all the pages. I ain't gonna lie. Aww, the cute little kitty there. Adorable. Hopefully, it can be something of that. I'm assuming that man's probably going to be a publisher. I mean, with that suit and tie. Could be wrong, but hopefully he finds it satisfactory. Oh, the kitty! <laughs> I love the way it stretches. I always love seeing animated cats or dogs. I wonder if he's going to bash on it. I mean, it is probably the first draft. Oh! Okay! That's reassuring. Oh, there's the butt. Okay. Okay, this is sounding good. Mmm. Okay. I'm loving the sound of this. Hopefully it means it can get published soon. I'm gonna cross my fingers there. Mmm. Mm. And now just I'm noticing that even when Nishikawa gets back up, he kind of strains a little bit because he's to get up with a bit more life too. Hmm. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's better that he be honest than to just lie straight up. I mean, yeah, sometimes just saying that you're going to change isn't enough. Sometimes it could take months, years to change. And then when you get old enough, sometimes it's near impossible to change. It really just all depends. Hmm. Wait, what's the demolition there? Hmm. Oh, is it? Okay, I wonder. Oh. <laughs> Oh boy, they're gonna be all pissed off at. Oh! Oh boy! It has been a while since they've shown that off. Even <laughs> the freaking talent. Oh, okay, that's a good question. Oh, fine. Okay, finally someone's calling out, calling them out. Finally, they should, because <laughs> we're gonna be on some scorched earth status. He actually should be a sham. Okay, he just has to be slapped in the face or punched for saying that. I wouldn't blame him if they punched him. I would not blame him one bit. Yeah, but at the same time, someone needs to be restrained. Yeah, exactly! Huh? How in the fuck is it a nuisance if the French was the reason why he's able- YES! FINALLY! FINALLY! Woo! I've been- I was hoping Kanachi would have been the one to punch Ishikawa, but hell, this is just as good. He DESERVES that! I am actually surprised he only stopped that one punch, though. But, eh, I mean, I guess I could see why he only stopped that one punch, because... <laughs> shit! Wow, you would think you would at least... No, 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 what in the hell? Wow. All that money that Kandanji spent worrying about his worrying about him is just fucking wasted. That pisses me off completely.
Honestly. I mean, can't blame people for liking Kielski. Kielski is a really dang cool dude taking advantage of. Taking advantage of. Man. Okay, that's going way too far. Kielski, punch the... Oh, that... I was hoping he was gonna punch that dude in the face. You should call him in the face. I'd be like, oh man. Okay, so going by this, he's probably gonna go for a straight up trying to finish what Tamaki started. The thing is, though. If he were to kill that man, he'd be wasting all of Tamaki's efforts, and Tamaki, even though she would have loved to. <sighs> At least now we know why. Why Ishikawa? Why Ishikawa's been like that? He's just been acting. Irrationally, due to feelings of vengeance, and kind of like the themes that are portraying accurately that vengeance it could lead someone to in a straight path and all that, and it could let also make people perform unreasonable actions on, oca on occasions. Oh, wait, so we actually. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, I actually like that. Even though he should call, I mean, even though Kyosuke hasn't acted on anger, it shows you that at the very least, he ain't no dumbass. He actually knows. That's actually. What the fuck is he doing? What in the fuck? Yeah, I mean, he always looks out for the best in Ishikawa. Oh, man. Normally, I'd say someone like Ishikawa would need a psychiatrist, but, I mean, he's probably way too deep in for a psychiatrist to even have any effect on this man anymore. What in the f... What in the fuck? You know... <gasps> Damn. You know, going in, I always thought in the series Ishikawa was gonna, like, maybe potentially die a real death or something. I never thought going in, he'd be doing this type of stuff, but... I guess with all the events that happened... I mean, yes, some people just take trauma differently. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's never a good thing when a character says I'm tired. Worst part is this man is pretty drunk. So he's not going to pick up on the nuances of what Ishikawa's feeling right now. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds like a cute poem there, actually. Hmm. Aw, oh, that sounds pretty cute. Hmm. I just hope this isn't the moment where Ishikawa passes away. I hope. Because if he literally dies hearing this poem, that is gonna be one of the saddest deaths. In an anime this season, actually. I ain't gonna lie. Mm.
gotta admit, the singer's voice is pretty damn beautiful. Aww. Oh, he actually <clears throat> went through with the traveling bit then. Alright. Good stuff, good stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. I hope he does not commit suicide. That'd be the worst. No, 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 no. Alright, good. Good. I mean, I know, yes, sometime Ishikawa is gonna die, but I do not want him to go down that. <clears throat> that explains the hat, because I kind of did look like he was his hat in the train then. <laughs> Mmm. Oh! Yeah. Always there. Looking out for him. That's really a true friend there. In Danji. That's a good question. That's also another thing, too. That's also true. But who knows, maybe Kyosuke just feels a sense of ease being with someone full of life like Ishikawa. Or maybe he just likes him. His personality. Hmm. He's such a sweetheart there. That should be no reason why he... That should be no reason why he should just give up and trying to live. Mm -hmm. Kandachi, he's a real one. Oh! Now he has to, he has to live there. That! He needs to. Oh man, that wow. That right there is a true friend right there. Kendachi. I mean, with that he's definitely become my favorite character in the series. Wow. And this episode was amazing. I am. I mean, to make me stir up a bit like that, quite a bit, that takes a lot. I think, I think this episode, it, it earns it. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna rate this one an 11 out of 10. I was gonna rate it 10 out of 10, but since I just felt a streak of emotions like that, that I normally don't feel when doing anything, let alone, it. yeah, when I, oh man. My words. What happened to my English? <laughs> it's, um... That, that's how you know an episode legit. When I fumble my words like that, due to, like, a major event happening in an episode, that's when you know. That, that's how I know an episode is fucking real. That, uh, this episode... It, it definitely, definitely resonated with me. That's why I feel this episode is 11 out of 10. Oh! PV time, alright. Hopefully now he's making progress on that novel. And you know, some happiness right before his death would actually be some really, really nice to see, you know? But anyways, you know, let, me, let me break down why I thought this episode was amazing, bit by bit. For one, this is by far the best episode of the series because, for one, you get to see Ishikawa's, the way he deals with death. Like in a lot of series, when characters deal with death, they usually deal with it with like a, with like a noble stance and all that, calmly. I like how this time the series takes a different approach though. You see Ishikawa, he's not calm. He's sad about it. He's trying to like, find purpose in, those, in his last moments and all that. It makes him, his character and personality feel just a lot more realistic and that's what I found to be really beautiful about this episode. It just makes the tragedy of it, it just makes it much more impactful. 
And then another thing I liked about this episode too, it shows you how much of an amazing man Kendan she is. To, for one, it shows you that no, he does. It shows you that he's become more intelligent as the series progresses because yeah, you knew all this time that Ishikawa wasn't utilizing the mommy properly, but he was still lending him a hand because he knew that he needed help the most because Ishikawa was contemplating things like taking his life. So that's another wonderful thing. Shows you Kyosuke's grand intelligence. Shows you how much of an amazing character he is. All the character development he's gone through. And then on top of that, seeing Ishikawa's deteriorating state, but then afterwards, gaining like the will to live when Kendachi told him straight up, the thing I will not accept is your death. Uh, that was beautiful. That was artful. That was one of the best sequences I've seen in anime this season. And you know what? That's saying a lot because currently I'm reacting to every anime that's a non-sequel or non-spin-up. And that was one of the best sequences I've seen this season. That was just wow. And then just the craziness intensity of the episode was just dang amazing I mean yeah this episode wow didn't couldn't predict it. it was my fave and I'm definitely pumped up to see what's gonna happen next but anyways y'all thank you so much for watching my reaction and have a great and safe day everyone and I'll see you guys later if you come back for more because I'm definitely pumped to see what the next few episodes are gonna have alright y'all bye bye